Hey, my name is Rachel and welcome back to Oxart Gardening. It's been a while since you guys have seen the garden, so I figured it is time for the first spring garden tour. We're starting in the usual corner of the large raised bed. This is where the garlic is. You can see right here it is getting so tall and luscious. There's maybe a few brown tips, but overall this stuff looks really, really good. I'm pretty excited about the garlic harvest this year. I actually planted the correct variety. Last year I accidentally planted, oh that's a, that's a cada. Anyways, uh, yeah, last year I accidentally planted hardneck garlic and here in the south um, hardneck garlic doesn't do so well. So this year I planted softneck garlic and I'm really looking forward to actually having a harvest of big bulbs here. Now behind the garlic is a few onions. You can see they're a little puny back there. And near the onions is some very old mushroom that came up a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was a blistered cup mushroom from the pictures. Um, and I'll show you all what it looked like a few weeks ago when it was fresh. But uh, basically this mushroom grows on feces generally. So um, given that this area of the garden was dug up uh, a little bit before this mushroom came, I'm thinking one of the cats pooped in the garden. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't appear to have been a bad thing. The onions around it seem fine and I've just left it alone. Next to the garlic and onion section is another onion section. This is where all of my onion starts went. Um, and if you didn't see my video about onion sets versus onion starts, you should go check that out. Um, but I have planted all of my starts here and they are doing really well. You can see, you can see in the other video that they looked pretty sad when I first put them in, but they're all putting on new leaves. Um, and even some of the, the saddest, smallest ones look pretty good. So I'm also pretty optimistic for a good onion harvest this year as opposed to last year. The onions in this other bed over here, those were back there, those were planted from seed. Um, and then these ones are the starts. So you can see also that the starts are a bit ahead of my seeds. Even though I started those seeds back in like, what? September, October? Yeah. Oh my goodness, y'all have to see this. This tree up here is my cat. That one's Draco. Uh, if you're new here, I have two black cats, Draco and Kata. And Kata is a baby still. She's just about to be one year old, but she's about the size of Draco now and allowed to be out in the garden with me. She's a little mischievous, but so far she hasn't wrecked anything in the garden. So I'm pretty proud of her. All right, so next to the onions, I have three rows here of turnips. Each row is a different kind of turnip, and I can't remember them off the top of my head right now, so I'll look that up and put that uh, as text here. But these just came up, and they're looking pretty good. Oh, and I just said that she hasn't been getting in the garden, and look at her. Um, she is on top of the carrot sprouts right now. Uh, you can see they are itty bitty, but coming in. I planted a lot of seeds here because I've had trouble getting carrots to germinate in the past, uh, but it looks like I'm going to have a right amount for this space this time around. All right, and then I have five rows here, and from left to right I have parsnips, two kinds of rutabagas, and two kinds of radishes. Again, I'm not entirely sure which varieties, but I do think I messed up here with the arrangement of my rows, because if you know, radishes will be done way before rutabagas will. So I really, instead of doing two and two, I should have done every other, because the radishes will pull while the, turn, uh, the rutabagas are still small, and then the rutabagas would have had a little bit of extra room to grow up. But you know, live and learn. Um, next to that is what used to be eight kale plants and is now two and a half kale plants. Um, these kale plants came to me from uh, the Experimental Farm Network 
and they are supposed to be kaleidoscope kale. So every kale um, is going to be a different kind of phenotype because it's not yet really a super stable genetic line. So I was pretty excited about that and um, only two of my eight transplants survived, but at least I got two. And so those of you who follow me pretty closely might realize that this garden layout is very different than what I had presented in my plan for the garden this year. And that is because um, I was already planning on moving this year, but my move out date got moved up to the beginning of the summer rather than the end of the summer. And so in order to take advantage of my space and not plant a bunch of baby plants here that would just get left as soon as I move, my move out date is in the middle of May, which is right about when you would start planting out peppers in this area. Tomatoes would go in about a month earlier than that. But basically what I've done here is I've filled out the bed with stuff, especially on the onion side, that will take longer than uh, when I would need the space for uh, the tomatoes and the peppers. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm putting my tomatoes and peppers in containers to take with me when I move. And the other tricky, tricky part of that is that I don't really know where I'm moving yet. I don't have somewhere lined up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move somewhere else directly when I'm leaving here. Um, and so the safest thing to do is really to just have everything in those containers that I can take with me. And as I go through this process of moving, I'm going to tell y'all about how I'm managing the garden and what I'm doing at the new place. Um, but for right now, I'm just trying to max out this space with stuff that grows in this season. So that's the root vegetables, that's the onions and the kale, um, that the rutabagas especially would never be done in time. Probably the carrots wouldn't be done in time either. Uh, and so hopefully this space will be like just as fully utilized as possible. Now the other thing you might be thinking is, hey Rachel, if you're moving in the middle of May, uh, what's going to happen to your garlic? which is supposed to be done in the middle of June or July. Well, since uh, my current roommate is not moving out, uh, I will hopefully be able to come back when those are ready and harvest them, fingers crossed. But if I don't, um, you know, I don't have too much of a problem with leaving it here for somebody else to enjoy. My only real problem would be leaving it here if it was going to be completely neglected and wasted. All right, so currently on my trellis spots, I have fava beans. These are much slower growers than I anticipated, but also it's been pretty cold. I planted these out in January and we can see the other side over here. Um, they've been doing pretty good. They definitely have stood up to the cold the way that they're supposed to. And I think eventually they're supposed to need this trellis, um, but we'll see. This is my first time ever growing fava beans and uh, I know pretty much nothing about them. Over here in the smaller raised bed, I have some carrots that were planted in the fall that I still haven't picked. Um, I have my giant sage plant that is always there, always beautiful. Um, and I put a few of the extra onions in here that I, these ones are ones that I had grown from seed. And uh, that's another Kata. <laughs> um, and these ones are also very puny, you can see, but they're alive. And, um, you know, at this point, there's no point in moving them. We'll see what happens. Um, additionally, you'll see this, ooh, this one here in the back. That is a garlic coming back up that never got removed from last year. And this one is an onion coming back that got left from last year, which I find highly interesting. So if you didn't know, garlic and onions are bulbs kind of the same way your like flower bulbs in your front bed are bulbs. You can see this was probably just one onion last year and its bulb has split and it came back just like your flowers might do. And so I'm really interested to see if this will bulb up normally 
Um, cause you don't really see people trying to grow, uh, like second year onions this way, right? Um, so I'm really interested to see if this will bulb up like a normal onion, if it'll only ever be this. And the same with my little garlic over here. You can see it has split. It is still small, but you know, we'll see. Interesting experiments. My carrots here, I've been pulling as time goes. They never really got that big, but now that it started to warm up, they're definitely putting out new growth. So maybe they will start growing again. But I have a feeling since they're like pretty old carrots at this point, they're gonna start, the texture is gonna start suffering. But I don't know, we'll see. Something else I did was I took some little lettuces from my like my mini greens salad bag grower thing and I like scooped them out and put them in here where they would have ample room to grow. There's a couple more back there and uh, theoretically I think these should get really big. Um, so far they are only kind of keeping up with the stuff in the bag but we'll see. Again this is an experiment. This is something I've been told that other people do and we'll see how well it works for me. Here is that bag in question, by the way. You can see the bare spots where I've pulled stuff out. But all in all, this looks so healthy. This was a really good solution for me for salad greens over the winter. And again, now that it's warming up, they're getting huge, even though they are packed really close together. All right, and before we go in the yard, we're gonna step inside the greenhouse. And I just want to warn you that it's going to be a little sad. We have here some very dead tomatoes. And this is what happens when you transplant all of your tomato seedlings the day before you go off to Florida for 10 days. I did have somebody in here um, who was supposed to water, but I think, you know, just without somebody being able to come every single day, and look after them they just got crispy so you know it's a bit of a loss that's not a tomato it's a bit of a loss but but I was planning on selling these at the farmers market anyway and I found out recently that that doesn't start until May instead of April like I originally thought which means that these seedlings were gonna be way ahead of time already like I wasn't planning on moving them out of these little cups so this might actually be a blessing in disguise because I was about to have way too big a tomato plants on my hands and now restarting them a couple of days ago like I did is gonna make them be actually just about the perfect size. So I'm not too torn up about it really. So I also have moved my basil seedlings outside and these have just recently been cut um, they were getting very, very tall while I was gone, and basil, if you didn't know, uh, along the stem, it splits every so often, right? And when you clip it right above a split, it basically will grow out these two as if they were main stems, and your plant will bush out. And so, since these were getting tall, and a lot of these are getting sold at the farmer's market as well, um, these got chopped, and hopefully they will bush out and be really attractive to the people at the farmer's market. Um, and with the tops, what I did was I made myself a little pesto because that's what you do. <laughs> and uh, you see I have some lemon basil, some lime basil back here. I've never grown these before, but it turns out they're really great in pesto. They literally taste citrusy. And since you're putting lemon juice in your pesto anyway most of the time, it was just a really, really great addition. Now, this cinnamon basil here, um, it's got a little bit more jagged leaves than some of the others, but I don't actually yet know what to do with that. I cut some, I put it in the freezer, and I'm not really sure what to put it in. I grew it because it sounded cool. <laughs> Have y'all done that before? Um, anyways, if y'all know what to do with cinnamon basil, I am open to suggestions. And if I like them, maybe I'll make a video about it. So here we are back in my mostly dead yard. 
Um, you can still see the dead pepper plants from last year back there. But in front of me, I have some gorgeous herbs. The cilantro, unfortunately, is already going to seed here in March. It's too warm for it. You can tell it's starting to go to seed because it's got these thin leaves here at the top and it's starting to get really, really tall. Whereas previously it was kind of a squat plant. But you could still harvest it right now. It hasn't put up any real flowers yet and have cilantro tasting leaves in your food, which I probably should do and freeze because last year I didn't have any cilantro for my fresh summer salsas. The rest of these herbs are doing really great though. They overwintered pretty perfectly. I mean, only the mint looks a little sad, but as you can see, he's coming back just fine. This dill was actually reseeded from my first dill over the summer and he started coming back right as winter hit and has now started looking like an actual healthy plant. Um, but mostly the oregano, the parsley, and the, the thyme have looked about the same all winter. Maybe the parsley had some like yellower leaves for a while, but in this climate you know, here in South Carolina, these herbs did just fine over winter. They sat here. I didn't water them. I just let them be and they, they look great. Additionally, I wanted you all to see my stevia. I thought I was going to have to totally replant it, but I noticed the other day it seemed to be coming back and I checked, I tasted it. Uh, that's a little risky, but that is indeed stevia coming back there. Um, so it turns out I don't have to reseed it at all, which is really nice. I didn't know it would come back, but it definitely, you can see it looked like it completely died off during the winter. And again, I did nothing to it. I just let it be here. So I have also some onions in containers back here. Back when I thought that I was going to be doing my original garden plan, I had extra onion starts that I had grown from seed and I didn't have room for them. And so I just stuck them in some pots. And these actually look like pretty, pretty good compared to some of my other starts. Even though I didn't exactly do anything to the used soil before I put them in because it was more of a just like if they grow they grow kind of situation for me but these look great um, probably gonna get some good onions out of these as well and even if I can't come back for the ones that are in the ground right now at least I can take these with me so last but not least I wanted to update you guys on all of the plant babies the plant babies are doing pretty well considering uh, again I was gone for 10 days and they didn't really have anybody to take care of them um, except for once or twice but everybody's looking really good um, although I do have what I think is a bit of an aphid problem on my peppers and I've had this problem also on the pepper that I brought indoors from last year um, and the, the problem seems to have spread and I'm not really sure what to do about it. I kind of just keep squishing them when I see them, but I'm hoping when they go outdoors that natural predators will kind of just take care of this all themselves. I also need to update you guys on my single seed challenge pepper. Again, this is a jigsaw pepper, so it's gonna have really interesting leaves. And uh, I think I'm actually going to end up topping this pepper soon, um, and that'll be a whole video, the topping of the peppers, but basically what you end up doing, you see similar to the basil how it is splitting here, and so if you cut it then these become main stems, and I think I want a shorter, bushier plant, especially considering that I'm trying to keep it small and on a windowsill this year. So uh, that's the update on that beautiful pepper. You can see all of my uh, flowers and herbs are also doing really well. Uh, I've got some marigolds in here that are pretty leggy at this point. Um, my uh, marshmallow is getting a little out of hand. Um, and the eggplants are also looking pretty healthy. Although these tomatoes over here are also very leggy. But with tomatoes in particular, 
that's not really a problem because you can just bury them as deep up as you want and all these little hairs along the stem those will become new roots so tomatoes the legginess isn't really a problem um, I'm not so sure about the marigolds I can kind of see some roots along the stem here so I might try burying them a little deeper when I repot them but we'll just see and this is my one pepper plant that I dug up from the garden put in a pot and brought inside this is an Adjvarsky pepper so it's a larger sweet red pepper with a really thick wall and he's looked really sad like this for a while now and I really don't know what's wrong um, he has had the aphid problem but you know I wouldn't think that it would cause him to look this sick I've tried fertilizing and he's still just putting out um, flowers like crazy and basically I think that means that he knows he's sick and is trying to reproduce before he dies so I keep pulling the flowers off of him hoping that he's not going to just reproduce and die um, and there's only only a couple more months until he can go back outside and maybe he'll get happier then and I can pot him into some fresh potting soil at that point now his friend the Tabasco plant is doing amazing look at that lush greenery this one did not have to be dug up it was already in this pot and if you look really closely here at the bottom you can kind of see the original plant here um, and all of this is basically new growth over the winter um, and so I am pretty happy with this Tabasco and hoping I'll have a head start on the hot pepper production this year. Alrighty guys, well that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, looking at the garden. Also before I go, um, while I was in Florida, I reached 1,000 subscribers, yay! And uh, thank you guys so much. Again, I cannot express how positive this community has been for me. I have not gotten one mean comment the whole time I've been on YouTube. Um, I've gotten a few creepy ones, <laughs> but nobody's been mean to me. And um, all of you have just been so supportive. And I'm so happy to be able to finally make back a little bit of money from ads to be able to grow the garden even better this year. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next time. Happy gardening. <laughs>